All right, so I'm gonna break this section down because this little minute and 42 seconds says so much. And it's one of the reasons just why I think Enoch is just above every other human that's ever lived. So I'm gonna let, you know, let this come out and then I'm gonna break it down and we're gonna talk about it. Then Enoch disappeared and no one of the children of men knew where he was hidden and where he abode. Genesis 5, 21. And Enoch lived sixty and five years and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah three hundred years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were three hundred sixty and five years. And Enoch walked with God and he was not, for God took him. And what had become of him? And his activities were with the holy ones and the watchers. And I, Enoch, was blessing the Lord of majesty and the king of the ages. And lo, the watchers called me, Enoch the scribe, and said to me, Enoch, you scribe of righteousness, go, tell the watchers of heaven who have left the high heaven, the holy eternal place, and have defiled themselves with women, and have done as the children of earth do, and have taken to themselves wives. You have done great destruction on the earth, and you shall have no peace nor forgiveness of sin. Since they delight themselves in their children, they shall see the murder of their beloved ones, and the destruction of their children shall, and they shall lament, and shall make supplication forever. You will receive neither mercy or peace. All right, so the first part of this, it talks about Enoch disappearing and nobody knew where he was, which is perfectly fine. Everybody's entitled to their own space, right? That's perfectly fine. But here's the thing. He disappeared for 300 years, okay? Now, me personally, I, I can't be the only one who's thought about the giants, the Nephilim, right? So according to the story, as you know, anyone who sort of follows the Nephilim for the most part knows that they were born, they lived, coincided with people, then they turned on people, and then the world needed to be flooded to erase them and all the other abominations that happened as a result of the angels coming down, right? Now here's the question, because this this all of those events didn't just happen in a year or two years, right? There had to be a point to where they came, you know, they were born. There was a long time of coexistence, many generations, because the giants became, you know, so numerous that people could no longer contain them. So we're talking about generation after generation after generation of these things being born, of years and years and years of the experimentations. Because remember, at this point, we, we were just taught magic. We were just taught science. They, of course, because I do think that they are aliens, they have their own science and technologies that they brought down during the fall. So there was a lot of just abominations going on. There was just a lot of experimentation, a lot of things that shouldn't have been going on was going on. So the, I always had the question of how long was it from the beginning to where the overseer just had enough of the entire situation and just wanted to erase everything. So I think that the question was sort of answered when it talks about Enoch being gone for 300 years, because I do think he was gone for 300 literal years right? He begat children, like, because he was gone the whole time. He lived to be 65, as far as a regular person is concerned. But if you want to look at how in the world could he have been gone for 300 years and came back? Well, if you've ever seen the movie Interstellar, well, then you can understand how, how space-time works. So here's, here's what's crazy to me, is because for 300 years... Enoch was around, quote unquote, angels and God or God and or 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 he was up there with aliens. Either way it goes, no matter how you want to believe it, either way, 
this man was up there in heaven or in space getting knowledge for 300 years. It could only been 10 to him. Who knows? But the point is, they called him the most holy of scribes. We all know what scribes are. We all know what scribes do. So he's up there for 300 years writing down everything. And he comes back to earth with a message, with a message from God. To say that all of you fallen angels, all of you ones who abandon your post, all of you, you've been down here for 300 years having sex, making kids, making Nephilim, all of this debauchery. You done taught them how to wield swords. You done taught them alchemy. You done taught them all of these uh, glitz and glamour with makeup and materialism and vanity. You've done brought all of this on these people, my creations. You done brought it on all of them. All of this stuff, all of these things going on, I don't even recognize Earth after 300 years of you guys being down here doing whatever you want. So I'm going to send Enoch back down here with the message to let you all know your days are numbered. You will not be forgiven. You will not get a second chance. All of your kids that you've made, the Nephilim, all of these kids that you have made that you've grown to love, I'm going to wipe them out. We're done. We're done with all of this, a.k.a. the flood. So he sends Enoch back down with the message of there is going to be a wrath on this whole earth. Name another human being that has had contact with events such as this. And we're not done with Enoch. This is the beginning. But name another human being that has had this right to be considered the one. Like you can say Moses because he came with the Ten Commandments. But if I'm not mistaken, Moses talked to a bush in a hole in a cave for a little bit of time. He wasn't taken up for, for hundreds and hundreds of years and just fed and shown everything. And I'm gonna, we're going to talk about him talking about what he was, what he's seen while he was up there because he does talk about it. Remember, he is the most holiest of scribes. He's the best scribe that there is. Right. So he's going to talk about he's going to not only bring back the word of the flood, he's going to bring back everything that he's seen while he was there. And we're going to talk about that stuff, too. But I just wanted to just talk about this particular minute and 42 seconds. This says a lot more than what is in a minute and 42 seconds to think about. It's incredible. This man blows me away his life his his life story blows me away so let me know what you think just about this little tidbit and we'll go from there as usual